Probably, India is the only country in the world which has a national anthem and a national song. The hymns which are meant to invigorate nationalism are often mired in controversies. Apparently, the national anthem takes the center stage. Ensued by a tug of war amongst different ideological persuasions which disparage the parent objectives of the anthem. Why it was written? Why it should be respected? Why one should stand when it is sung? In whom it was addressed? Escaping these obfuscating debates is difficult. Hence, we need to plunge into the story of our national anthem. The year was 1911, British India shifted its capital to Delhi from Calcutta. This was orchestrated by Grand Delhi Darbar. The Indian National Congress, elated over the annulment of partition of Bengal and the success of Swadeshi movement, invited His Highness King George V at its annual session in Calcutta to commemorate the event. British officers, along with few Congress leaders, approached Tagore, requesting him to pen down a poem in the praise of the monarch. Enraged Tagore contained his anger, which reflected mockingly in General Anaman. Ironically, in the air of psychophancy and exuberant journalists. Officers and leaders failed to discern Tagore pulling leg of the king in subtle poetry. Not many people know that Anabre Janganaman consists of four paragraphs, and a careful reading reveals how sarcastically Tagore denigrates king's rule. Oblivious to this fact, many doubting Thomases have noted the poem is an eulogy to the king and fueling demand to replace the word Adinayak. One needs to realize that the words Chief Sarthi and Snehmahi Tumhi Mata are definitely not addressed to the king, but it's a praise for the dispenser of human destiny, who appears in every age. A letter in 1937 by Tagore notes, I should insult myself if I cared to answer those who consider me of such unbound stupidity to sing of King George V. National anthem is an allegory of nationalistic feeling, which unifies us at social congregations. when we shed of our individual identity in the name of fraternity recently the supreme court ruled that everyone must stand to demonstrate commitment to nationalism during the movie screening which created row pitching fundamental rights against the fundamental duties indian constitution after all speaks of respect to the national anthem and the flag as a fundamental duty under part 4a which is non justiciable article 51a under its first clause Quote unquote, ask every citizen to abide by the constitution and respect the ideals of national flag and national anthem. It is a common tendency to invoke Gandhi in every contentious debate. So let us see how we perceive respect for patriotic hymns. On August 29, 1947, Vande Matram was sung at Mahatma's prayer meeting in Calcutta. Remember, at the time, a national anthem was yet to be decided, and Vande Matram had the urgent support. On the stage everyone stood up to show their respect along with the rest of the audience Gandhi alone remained seated because he believed standing up as a mark of respect was a necessary western import and was not a requirement of indian culture countries like italy and us have a liberal attitude towards the national symbols and anthem while thailand's love for its anthem is more fervent than most it is played every day on television at 8 am in the morning and 6 pm in the evening Students gather in front of the national flag in the morning to sing their anthem. Unlike other countries, our anthem does not mention words like blood and war. Instead, it's a poetic reflection of Indian geography and historical resonance, which was challenged by numerous pillages and invasions. Purpose of our anthem is to unite us, not to divide us. Patriotism is a feeling which could neither be inculcated by state nor it will be eroded by warming up the seeds.